want to eat. Crap. Warning. The following audio may contain language is not suitable for younger audience. The opinions expressed from solely those and speakers themselves may contain spoilers for current sporting events. Running Geeks and Running Geeks Sports Network makes no claim to ownership of any of the teams, franchises, and various sources discussed. Listener discretion is strongly advised. We'll be recapping NFL Week 14, making our bold prediction for NFL Week 15, and we've got some other alternative news we got for you guys, which will be earning us our rating. Hence why I'm staying on the warning slide for this moment in time. Just to remind you guys, we are an adult sport content page. We need you to bear with us. As always, Tony, how we doing, amazing Spider fans? Just saying. You know, I think we changed my name to something. I don't have no change to do. Uh, Took me all day to think about that. The, the Battle of the Champions. I got something super creative. The host, dude. Oh my yeah. god, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so lazy. But anyway, Grony Geeks. Be sure to like the page, be sure to hit that subscribe button, be sure to hit the like that grown the uh, grown a geeks Express network. Just woke up. Brain's still a little slow. I oh. did just wake up. <laughs> yeah, but like just wake up. But like what we are discussing today is some wake sensitive up. content from a couple weeks ago. We've been kind of like debating back and forth whether we need to discuss it on air, and Tony has Convince me that it is worth talking about, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna hand over the reins to you and uh, let you run wild. We are currently going to be discussing Zach Stacy, former NFL player. <sighs> okay, this is a very difficult topic to discuss. Because it's one of the things that I will not ever in my life support. If I see it happening in real life, I honestly will do something about it. And that's the abuse of a woman. And for those that you do, for those that don't know, Zach Stacy demolished his girlfriend. I don't know the parameters behind why it happened. But watching the video and how he slung this young lady around. And then to have the audacity to come out and victim blame her saying she caused this is reprehensible. I would try to fight him, but I myself would also get my ass kicked because I'm not a football player. I'm not at peak human physical condition at this moment. But I would cheat and hit him with a brick. I would take out his knees and then I would try to put him to sleep. This is something that it angers me to the point that I want him in jail in gin pop and him be labeled as a child molester. That's how bad I want something to happen to this guy. I don't care if you say you have medical issues, say you have CD, I don't care. The, the, we, we've had this happen before. We've seen it happen with you no know, certain running backs or the Ravens who got black balls, but that he came out and apologized for what he did. He said he was wrong. You being the bitch that you are, blame the female for this situation. I, I, don't, I don't want to get us too deep into the rabbit hole behind this. But you're a bitch, 100%. Your mama should have swallowed you. Your daddy should have jacked off in the sock too. That's how you should end up. That's, that should be you right now. You're a below human skull. I need you raped with a baroon every day. That's how I feel about you right now. So that's, I don't want to, that's, it's on you now. Yes. For those of you who haven't seen the video and or kind of probably like, whoa. If, from but what if you Tony don't was have saying, a strong stomach, do not watch it. 
Because the video in question shows, like exactly as Tony said, a grown ex-NFL man <coughs> physically throwing his weight around on a much, much smaller woman in front of their six-month-old infant. And it's showing that, as most science will back up, men are physically superior to women. And he used that superiority when you were supposed to be using it for protection and care of your family to assert his will over his significant other. And, and it is classless. It's wrong. I don't care the ongoing issues. I don't care what you and your significant other are going through. Putting your hands on a woman in any context is wrong. And I cannot agree more wholeheartedly. I may not agree the specifics or the uh, sentiments, how they were voiced. But I absolutely agree that something needs to be done to this man equivalent to what we can do within the limitations of the law and the United States legal system. It was it was crass to say the least. It was it was vile. It would probably be a more accurate summarization of what has transpired on this video and I can't I can't honestly believe so little has been done about this and that for him to blame her for how he behaved. We as adults are only responsible for our behavior. Sure we can blame the people around us for making us act a certain way. At a certain point, you are responsible for your behavior, and you need to act as such. And this little boy decided not to, and I can't, I can't express how much it's uneasing to see a video like that still happen in today's day and age. But no, before we get that rabbit hole, because you know no, no, no. we'll be here. I, let me just say one thing. I'm gonna I'm put this into perspective. He's 5'9", 224, so he's basically my size. And the female in question was half his size. So that's like a grown man fighting a child. And this hits closer to me, hits so cl closer home to me because I have two dogs. And I've already expressed to them what I would do if anybody did anything to them to this point. They already know I'm crazy. So this, this is a little closer to home for me. When you have your spawn of Satan's, which I'm sure you will eventually, you, you'll see. You'll, your feelings now, I want you, I want, this is what I want you to remember. I want you to remember how you feel now. And if you have a daughter or even, even a son, because sons, you know, guys do get into domestic violence situations also. They are abused. It's just not talked about. When you have your child, I want you to remember that feeling and check your new level of frustration. Because it's, it's, it's different for parents because it's a lot of parents. A lot of people I talked to didn't have kids who was like, yeah, he shouldn't have did that. And, you know, you, you, you didn't get the, the anger level. When you talk to somebody who has kids, there's like, I would kill that bitch. It's a different level of frustration. Mm -hmm. It's just certain things that you do not do because people, it's like with you. You have different situations that you were put in and I was put in. You would be more violent than I would. Yeah. It's it's just that's just how life is. So, and this for me is one of those situations. So, yeah, it's, I don't play about it. I don't make jokes about it. I put a stop to it when I see it. Yeah, there's no excuse in anyone's mind strong enough to put hands on a woman in any context. that way. In, in that way. That. We at uh, Gag Sports Network will never, and I cannot express the word never strongly enough, condone any actions like this or joke about putting hands on a woman. Just, I I don't care. It's it's not a thing. We don't we don't do that. That'll make me swing on you. <sighs> this is true. That being said, we're gonna start changing gears to a much less serious topic. Would you like to cover college football? First, I'm sure you would like to talk about your Georgia Bulldogs and college recruiting, the offseason that wins championships. It, it don't matter about our recruiting because I fucking coach can't make adjustments anymore. He could at the beginning of the season. I don't know what he did. Ah! 
I'm still mad about that. So he I'm played sorry. Nick Saban. So That's what? what happened. Nick Saban is probably the college goat. I got a I got a question. Alabama played Florida, right? Yep. They they won by how much? Like what three? Like they squeaked it by. Georgia played Florida, right? Yep. They won by how much? It was like 17 or 20, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Alabama played Auburn, right? Yep. What happened? Oh, four overtimes? And like they won by three. It wasn't like a touchdown or anything. Georgia played Auburn, right? Smoked them. You see, you see what I'm getting at? There's yeah, no I see reason. exactly what you're getting at. That, There's no each, reason. Each team provides a unique set of scenarios <sighs> pertaining to them. So... When I'm you sad. match up I'm against still sad about that. Alabama, you got Nick Saban. He yeah. is the head and shoulders cream of the crop. Why college coaches get paid top dollar? You beat Nick and Saban. Why? That is a feather in your cap for eternity. And why some college coaches should stay in college? Urban Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not going to. I'm sorry. That I said. Far, I said. I segue. I segue so too early. Segue too early. My bad. <laughs> Let me know how the recruiting's going because I really want to talk about the uh, cornerback who committed to Jackson State. Okay, so and I have Sanders. I have two separate standings here. I'm not going to mention the website since they're not paying us yet. But I have two different rankings. One ranking I will agree with. One ranking I'm like, eh? Okay. So... I think, let me see what I got. I believe I have top 10. Do you want just the top five? Uh, let's just go top five, talk about what's going on now, because it's still really early in the recruiting class game. All right, so from the site on my right, the top five from top to bottom are Texas A&M, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Texas. SEC teams other than one. Now, from the side on my left, Alabama, Michigan, Georgia, Cincinnati, and Notre Dame. Don't even remotely line up. I know it's early in the recruiting game, but having that great a divide is a little, it's a little, a little premature. And, and just to say, in one of the in the one that I support, I know you know I support the right. Mm. One of those teams, Cincinnati didn't even make the top ten. And I'm seriously, I had to read over this on how they made a top four in all of college football, not just their conference. In all of college football, Notre Dame, I can see how they might be top five but how does their coach leave it a lot of those recruits Jump have shit. decided to leave look at lsu for example a lot of their recruits have left and then a lot of the recruits from notre dame went down there oh we're gonna welcome them hmm. we go welcome them this this is smash mouth down here it's in all you know this in the air raid system that's and you can't just make up a southern accent and assume the South will accept you. That's not how that happens. That's not how that transpires. One of the lawyers I work with, she's an alumni from LSU. I said, so, she said, before you even say anything, do not talk to me about that Kelly guy. We're not going there. And she closed the door. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. She was like, tell me you feel strong without telling me you feel strong. And she is a big LSU fan. And she was like, I'm not talking about this. I don't want to think about it. Just let me have this. <laughs> it's like, it is okay. what it is. But I will say that I I do think that the top three recruited classes right now are STC schools, A&M, Bama, and Georgia. And I think Georgia is slowly creeping up because we did get the number one quarterback in Georgia, which is saying a lot because they usually go somewhere else. They usually leave. Usually to Clemson. Yeah, Clemson, uh, they might go to out west to one of those California schools for some reason because they've never been to California. We also got another solid tight end, even though we got two solid ones now. We got a couple of solid wide receivers. We got four or five massive offensive linemen. 
So that trend is going to continue. Um, Bulldogs right now have 27 commitments. 27. Their top guy is a guy named Starks. He's ranked 0.99.29. <laughs> Which is good. It's very, very good. This is good. Number 14 overall in, in the nation. And they say, listen to what he plays. Safety, linebacker, quarterback. That's an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. He plays what? Okay, he said he said he 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 pretty much plays any position. He basically likes yeah. to throw the ball really far and hit you really hard. So yeah, so he's number one athlete overall, number fourteen overall for recruit. So, um, A and M. Do I think they have the number one recruiting class? Debatable. It's, early. it's debatable. It is it is between them and Alabama. A&M has 25 commitments. Alabama has 24. I mean, their athletes are way different. There are more five stars at Alabama, but A&M has more four and five stars. So I think that's where the weight come in. Um, I think the best guy Alabama got was an edge rusher. Like, they need any more solid defensive players. They just uh, fail every year. It's like every year. His name is Jeremiah Alexander. He's number eight overall. 9942 is his rating. Um, they compare him to Will Anderson. He plays there now. I, I mean, Alabama is a solid. They always have a solid class. But going over the rest of this list, I don't I don't understand the thought process on how Cincinnati I, I don't understand it. I don't even have numbers on them like that. It's their, their top guy is ranked number two hundred and seventy overall. Okay. I mean if that's what y'all feel like you want to put Cincinnati in there, go ahead. But I kinda get with Texas. They always recruit well. It's just the players they recruit don't mesh on the field, and that's the biggest problem with Texas. It's like you can you can have the best players in the world on one team, but if they don't learn to play together, it's going to be a clusterfuck. And that's what Texas has turned into. You need to get players that play well as a unit, not as individuals. Yeah, you can have one or two superstars, but look at look at the Alabama teams of old. They always focused on that one guy, offense and defense, even two guys at times. But as a unit, they were better than their individual parts because when those guys got to the NFL, some of them defensive players weren't good. It's just they played on a good defense that they knew how to play together. Yeah, some people are great in the system they're in. When you put them outside of that system, they are exposed. They are trash. Trash. But but while we're talking about college shakeup, that number two cornerback in the nation decommitting from Florida State. I thought he was number one overall. Was he number one overall? He was number one. I know he, he was, was top. up there. He was one or two. He was. He was. The, he was the. Name. He was the top recruit. Number one. Top period. guy. Was going yeah. Number Decides one. Decides to go to Jackson State. Historically, what is HBCU University? Yes, historically black college and university. To play for prime time. I mean, think can can you blame him? Think about it. Yes, I understand. Florida State is the bigger draw. I understand that it's power five. It's some good that. corners in the league. But. Let's not discount Jackson State, who's playing for a title also. Just so y'all know. Has one of, can't even say one of, has the best cornerback to play the game in the NFL as their coach. If you're a cornerback with aspirations to play in the NFL. Who else would you want to learn from? What sounds more appealing? Going to Florida State and fighting for a bowl game. 
but you'll still get recognized or going to play for coach prime and pick the greatest cornerbacks mind for how, for three years whose game where's your game going to improve prime time unequivocally learning from the best is how you become the best you don't become now, the best overnight without someone in your ear you're still going to be a first round pick no doubt it's just no doubt. prime time you're here you're without prime and, time you're here and the, the thing people and I get in that thought later. The thing people don't understand is Coach Prime loves to talk. So every interview, he's gonna be hyping this kid up. Hey, I want y'all to pay attention to him. I want y'all to he's gonna be in the NFL coach's ears. Hey, come watch my guy play. Hey, we're playing a pretty solid team. Come watch my guy play and watch what he does. That kid gets out there and he performs. You fuck around. HBC, you might have a number one overall pick. I'm just saying, fuck around. Depending on who's at the top and who needs a, what they need. I'm gonna see. Did you see the Twitter video of Primetime like losing his shit when the when the young man recruited, like signed with Jackson State? He was beside oh. himself. You thought one of his sons like got sent and to like the premier university. Let me let me let me say this. This is something that you, you've been knowing me for a while. I have preached this. While I do think that the Power Fives deserve who they get, I also think that some of these kids, they don't need to be in the Power Five. They need to actually be at HBCUs for one reason. They're going to treat you better there than at the Power Fives. At the Power Fives, they're going to want you to blend in. At the HBCUs, they're going to want you to stand out. They want you to showcase your skills. And this goes back to the fact before the NIL came into effect, all the players was like, oh, they're doing us dirty. And I'm like, well, why don't y'all go to one of these black colleges? They'll, they'll do you right. All the time. Look at look at this Sharps. One of them went to Savannah State. My, my college. Treated him right. He came back and got a degree when I was there. Hugh Douglas. Same thing, HBC. Hugh Douglas. All the way through. And he, Great he, career in the NFL. He always sent out messages, hey, just don't think just because you go to HBCU, you won't be successful. I, myself, would prefer our kids to go to HBCU. Did Jerry Rice play HBCU or was he just he D2? Okay. I think he was just D2. I don't think Troy State is. No, I don't think he's part of that. It's, okay. it's so many of them. I don't, look, I'm old. I forget a lot of things. I know, you know, the ones that are always in the headlines, like you, Grandpa, so, you know, mm. Valdos, not Valdos, not Fort Valley States, those. There are other ones that it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. My bad. So, but. Bringing I would some like, big names into these colleges will help us not forget. Right. And it's like, and some of the stuff that I was saying, I saw this one dude had a sign and frame Florida State Dion jersey. And he burned it because Coach Prime took a recruit from both of their alma maters. Because people forget. That's a lot of money right there. Bro, you didn't have to burn that. You could have given it. You I don't even sold like that. You could have given it to me. I don't like Florida State, but my brother does. And I was like, it's so, Dion, Prime, so quick. Prime Sanders. Like, that's, there's some money Dion, there. That don't, that don't hurt Dion at all. So why are you burning stuff that you already own? Yeah, that, I never understood the whole jersey burning. Because people like, didn't you burn your break jersey? No, absolutely nah, not. Under zero I, circumstances. I didn't. I gave mine to my friend who's a Braves fan. I'm not going to get use out of it. He will. It's like, do something good with yourself. Don't, don't just be I'm like, like, this don't make sense. On fire. And then all the other people are like, oh, why, why is he going there? He, they don't have the you know, resources. How do you oh, know he's got plenty have? of resources to succeed. And with college now being openly able to play players, you think you don't think prime time is going to be able to hook you up with a commercial or two or some good agent to make you sure don't, your interests you don't are think, taken care of? You don't of? think some Come of on. his recruits might end up in Aflax commercial? I'm saying, I'm saying. He's got something going on. That being so, said, yeah. we got to change gears due to the time frame in which we're working with. Well, I know time frames. Damn that. we got to do a quick recap week 14. I'm going to list you the, the teams. You let me know. How you felt I'm about saying, the game? Been bullshit to everything. 
I went nine and five this week, pushed my lead Bullshit. to sixteen games. Moving to the end of the week. Saints, Jets. Falcons, Panthers. I don't know why we won, but okay. Because I think I'm, I'm glad we won, but Seahawks, Texans. Raiders, Chiefs. Ravens I mean, none of the games. Browns. Look, Lamar didn't play that game. I'm calling a protest. I should have won out. <laughs> should have. Tyler, I mean, Hunt, Tyler Huntley played good. Which is, I, I don't care. Tyler, Look, Tyler. Sorry. I don't care. It's awful. Cowboys, Washington football team. Why do we ever want to talk about the Cowboys? Jags, Titans. Lions, Broncos. I mean, think, just pick a game that might seem interesting because you, <laughs> once you're listing now, it's garbage. All right. There were only two games last week that mattered worth a damn. <laughs> Maybe. 49ers, Bengals. Okay. That was a good one. That was a good one. Okay. What's the other one? Let's see which one I want to talk about. Bills, Bucks. The only two games that went to overtime, the Rams and Cardinals didn't go to overtime, and the Chiefs and Chargers were good. Thursday night. That was a good game. I, 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 was, I would say the Ram and Bucks exceeded my expectations because I really thought, but well, thank you, Tom Brady and Leonard Fournette for getting me into the championship round. I appreciate y'all because y'all did it. Y'all did your thing. And now you got to beat up Justin Herbert, who already dropped a cool 23, 23. pieces on you. It's okay. Hey, I played Mahomes. He put up 29. It's okay. I just I just need Brady to put up 23. Yeah. He can do that. They yeah. play Carolina. Eye for eye. Let's go. So. I, I would like to say that Tampa Bay in the first half looked like a Super Bowl team, while Buffalo in the second half looked like a Super Bowl team. It, it was like two different games I watched, but I do like the competitive nature that the Bills brought out into the second half. I like the adjustments, Kirby, that the Bills brought out, and Tom Brady had to make his adjustments. It was a great game. I didn't think it was going to be that good. I really thought the, the Bucks were going to win by like 30 because just how bad the, uh, the Bills have been playing lately. But they surprised me. If they can figure out how to do that for an entire game, they'll be back in the, the talk for the favorites for the AFC. It'll I don't know if that's going to happen. That would definitely be a conversation, but I don't know if they can do it. I'm yeah. slowly losing faith in them. Which is not a bad thing if you're an NFC South fan because the last thing you want is have one team from your division just completely shine while your team is just sitting in a cellar dweller. Look, we're in second place. Mm. We are. That's we're, sad. We're in, second, we're in second place. Bad division. You guys are ruining your draft stock. Fuck around and end Look, up in the top 15. We split with the Panthers and we already beat the Saints. We're in second place. Just, with, just like my fantasy football team right now. With all the random anarchy going on in the NFL, talk to me about the COVID protocols. Oh, my God. I don't just have give protocols. Give me, like, the fast list of who's out. Just give me the big names because I have okay. something I want to say to the NFL, and it is from the bottom of my heart. Falcons got three. Cardinals got one. One. Panthers. Oh, even though Christian McCaffrey was out for the year, he now has COVID. Icing on the cake at this point. Let's just put a little frosting <laughs> on there. Like, why not? Uh, Chicago Bears is one of the teams that have multiple. They have 10. Allen Robinson, I think, is their biggest name. I didn't even know Mario Ed was played for them. Yeah, he quietly went to them. Okay, well, he's the only one. Uh, Bengals only got three. Browns. 23. Last, they added Green Hunt 20, to it. <laughs> now it's 23, but when I had it, when I made it yesterday, it was at 14, so... Now they're at like, 23. Kareem Hunt's on the list. Baker Mayfield, Kevin Stefanski, Case I got Keenum. Them. Like, it's on their third-string quarterback. Austin, Austin Hooper, Jarvis Landry, Tack McKissick. McKinley, I'm sorry, because he was with us, too. Oh, plus. Yeah, for a little bit. Uh, Dallas only got one. Detroit, one. Green Bay, one. Houston, seven. But they're a bad team, so it's not... You're not even going to miss them. Chiefs, not a lot. Chargers have 10. Biggest name is Rashawn Slater. I mean, yeah. I'm just Los Angeles say, Rams. I really, really what? want to say this. 
What? Dear NFL. Oh. Did you guys move those games around because you cared about player safety? No. Or did you move oh. those games around because you cared about the revenue that you guys could have potentially lost this week? Not only from Vegas, because a lot of people's fantasy football championships are this week, but also because of ticket sales. And you know if you move this game back even further, people will not be able to make your games, buy your food, buy your snacks, buy your drinks, come support your local tailgates, all that hoopla. NFL, you're preaching safety. Can, but this is I the add? most <laughs> hollow attempt I've seen of late to reclaim any sense of recognition as a viable sports organization. Mm. This is crap. It's, this is like the NCAA but, when they're saying, like, we have such a clean game. It's not about wait, the money. Shut didn't, up. Didn't the, <laughs> didn't the NFL say at the beginning of the season they weren't going to postpone any games for COVID-related reasons? Didn't they say that? They said, said if that you with have, his chest. He said that loud. He said, he said if said you have loud. players out, you still have to play the game. And they rescheduled three. <laughs> and he's like, there was pushback, but we got it done. That's what matters. Goodell, what, what kind of I believe, arrogance do you got going on here? Maybe? I believe Goodell on this issue like I believe him on not knowing what's in the emails. Uh, and then we believe that Daniel <laughs> Snyder was not blocking reporters from questions. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. Nope. Uh-uh. Guilty. I don't. Okay, back on top. Stop it. Stop it. Back on top. That was your fault this time. And I support it. <laughs> uh, Rams. Oh, 15. Biggest names. Odell, Jalen Ramsey, Vaughn Miller, and A.J. Jackson. I think he's one of their pretty good tackles. Yeah, uh, Dol Ooh, hold on. Dolphins have five. Mark Gaskins and Jalen Waddle, who I need. Mm -hmm. Y'all, that's the game y'all need to push back. I need him on my fantasy team. He was putting up twenty five a game. Uh, Minnesota got seven. Patriots have three. You have to tell me if these guys are important. Dalton King, nope. Yasir Durant, nope. Ronnie Perkins, nope. Okay, so y'all still be in first place. Carry on. <laughs> Ideally, yes. Uh, Giants have six. I think Darius Tony is their biggest name, which didn't say a lot. The Jets have three. It, their team doesn't matter. Never the Eagles, has. two. Steelers, one. Seahawks, two. Tennessee, two. Washington, 745. <laughs> <laughs> the entire state is on COVID alert. And it's just like multiple at every position. Every position. Yes, I mean. All, of, all, basically, all the teams that have nothing to do but party. That's each team's like. got a COVID list. Atlanta had three, and it was but mainly I mean, comparing practice your party people. scene to like Cleveland, where there's literally nothing else to do. That's the thing. Our party scene is ridiculous. It's ridiculous down here. They party for nothing. Whoa, wait! Somebody got a ticket. Woohoo! Let's get some drinks. I mean, seriously, that's all it is. <laughs> oh, gotta gotta love the state of Georgia. They they know how to party and they know how to party hard. But with all things being considered, we'll kind of wrap up that COVID list. We'll get that week fifteen pick up so we can get this nice and done with that forty five minutes that we usually try I to think, get our shows done. I think I need to get the win for Thursday night because I would have picked Kansas City. So that automatically we already won that game. I, I I don't I still say I, I that picked that Kansas be, City. So that should be my no. that should be my one. That's not how this works. Just so you're aware, next Thursday's game is 49ers and Titans. We'll have to pick it now. I already looked at my work schedule. It's going to be a lot of hubbub and a lot of chaos. I just want to make sure you are aware of the same information I am going into the pick. I hate you. Eh, shenanigans. <laughs> mm. All things being considered, my first pick, I'm taking the 49ers over the Falcons. Playoff team versus, well. Second place the in the division. <laughs> Second place in the, you going to show us our respect, God damn it. The third First. place 49ers who are vying for a playoff spot and are currently in versus the second place team that is looking who for Who is vying for a playoff pick. spot. We're vying for a playoff spot also. We're number eight. Yeah, because the NFC is just anarchy. So what? I don't care. I don't care. Carry on. 
Your pick. Fucker. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, let's. Oh, I'm going to leave that game for you. I'm going to try my best to leave that game for you. Oh, I know what you're going to be talking about. <laughs> that I know game you. looks nasty. All right. Just because the way my picks are going this year, it's going to be shit. I'm going to take Dallas. Over the G man. I gotta roll with the G man. Roberto be when, damned. Know when to follow them. I know when to pick the Cardinals over the Lions. I already knew that was your pick. Lions gonna win this week. Nah. Not unless Burrow throws like three more picks again. Let me take the Dolphins over the Jets. J E T S gag on these balls. That's why you got to root for a division. I'm taking the Green Bay Packers. And the discount double check over the Lamar Jacksonless Ravens. Yeah, nope. Ninety percent he'll play. Mm-hmm. Play well or play because he was supposed to play well last week. And uh, thanks for the three points of fantasy, Lamar. You bum. You didn't. I'm saying. I'm glad you gave me that. That wouldn't have to worry about getting stabbed in the neck. I don't even think she's up yet. Um, real bullshit ass games. Yeah, there's a lot of teams where you look at it and you're like, oh, wow. All right, give me Buffalo over Carolina. That sounds a good one. That's a good one. I will take the Bucks Carolina with. over the Aints. Carolina go away that game. Just the shits and giggles. Like, they reactivated Sam Darnold, but I'm like, uh, for why? The season's over. Hmm. All of these games are like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> They're just straight up busters. Uh, let me take Minnesota over a Chicago. Justin Field, let's go crazy. I will take the Bengals over the Broncos. Drop Barra. Barra. Show me a W. I'm going to take the Thursday night game. 49ers over the Miami Titans. Bold strategy. Cotton will see if it pays off for them. And just to keep things all the way the same. Tennessee Titans over Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going all in on Tennessee, getting two more Ws. Pittsburgh has been a bunch of busters. Oh. The headbutt, the weapon of justice. I got Lamar again this week. Yeah. <laughs> <Worth it. laughs> That's all she cares about. Uh, is it my pick? It's your pick. Mm-hmm. So I took Titans over Steelers. You will end up with that game, my friend. Yup. <laughs> Give me the Rams over the Seahawks. You're ending up with the bullshit game. <laughs> There's a bunch of bullshit games. Which ones are you specifically referencing? Oh, you'll see the last one. Oh, I know you're going to make me pick my team. <laughs> so I'm going to throw a wrench in your plan. Patriots over Colts. Riding That's it tonight. Not... Damn you. <laughs> Fucker. Even though last week you just declared I'd never get my team as long as the rest of the season was going on. But I don't even know. I stopped caring. next week you're just like, eh. I stopped. I fuck it. I stopped caring. Uh, what was I doing? Nothing. Shame. Damn it. I thought I was hoping you didn't see that one over there. All right. Fine. I know you're uh, Let's teams. go. All of these, bu- these last three games are bullshit. Right? I really don't. They're all garbage. Yup. NFC East, AFC South. Okay, and so the other AFC crap shoot. The the Cleveland Las Vegas game that was moved to Tuesday. Tuesday. That was either Tuesday or Monday. Because I know the Washington and Eagles game got moved back to. That's on Monday. Yeah, basically, if, if you guys wanted football for Christmas, you have football from today, tomorrow, you get it Monday, you get it Tuesday, Wednesday, you get a day off for rest, you're back Thursday, college football's on Friday, 
NFL's on Saturday and Sunday again next week. Merry freaking Christmas, everybody. Happy oh, tailgate. Or happy holidays for those of you who are non-religious. <laughs> Make sure you're acknowledged. Or if all my witches and warlocks out there. Paganism. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Dumbledore. Get back to the pickles. I'm trying to stall so we run out of time. I'm okay. <laughs> Shit. Uh... I really don't know. Uh, fuck it. Let me take Washington over Philadelphia. I'll take, I really, I'll take the Raiders over Browns. Brown's entire roster got COVID. You that's what I'm saying. The Texans the Jaguars game. I played that, this beautifully. That's fine. I didn't. I, I already knew who I was picking that one because one team is bad, the other team is shit, and I'm going to take Jacksonville. Ooh, Urban Meyer was Jacksonville. <laughs> Didn't I pick them when they won their only game? Didn't I pick them? And I said this By week? accident. <laughs> no, I did. It wasn't no by accident. Well, check the tape. We will reconvene to talk about this. But, Grown and Geeks, thank you for stopping by. Be sure to check out the Facebook page. Be sure to check out anchor.fm slash Grown and Geeks for the audio-only content of everything we do, which we got some amazing new content coming down the pipe for you, including Spider-Man. And be sure to check out Gag Sports Network on Facebook, like the page, run the camera, or any of these QR codes to hit these valuable, amazing, beautiful links and see all the stuff that we do. Tony, hmm? hit him with the outro. Come on!